Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I've got a murder party game for you today, and this is going to be awesome. But before we jump into this game, i got a quick little announcement to make. Maybe not so quick. I've got something I want to discuss with you. I'm going to be adding a new feature to the channel. Going to see how it goes for a little bit. If everybody likes it, I will keep doing it. But here is what's going to happen. Uh, either this Saturday, if I can get everything together technically, or next Saturday at the latest, I'm going to start doing a live feed. And this is going to be through YouTube. The first one is just going to be me with a question and answer session. And then following that, I actually want to get other people on here with me so that you can ask questions that you may have, get opinions, and uh, just generally talk about stuff. And that could be anybody from Shio and or Visionic to talk about the server, FAF client, the community, everything that goes on with us. It could be a top rated player, so you can ask their opinions on what they think about different engagements in this game. It could be anything that you request or any volunteers that just want to come on and discuss things with me. The first one is just going to be me. And if you tune into the live feed, start asking your questions. I may accept uh, voice chat one at a time, unmuting people in the channel. Or I may do it entirely over text. I haven't decided yet. But you can ask me any kind of question you want to. Specific questions about uses and balances of units. Uh, your, my opinion on strategies, things concerning factions, lore, talk about the origin, origins of subcom, things in my personal life, whatever it may possibly be, it'll just be us, the community, talking together. I love talking to you guys, and I love engaging in the YouTube comments, and I want more of that. I want people to be here, to have fun, to ask questions, and to just talk to each other. Talking is fantastic. So... That is going to be late afternoon Easter time. I'm thinking like 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, that would be, what, 3 p.m. on the West Coast, or 2 p.m., and midnight or so for the European players. So I think that's a good, um, a good figure to shoot for as far as when most people can be online if they want to be. And then, of course, since the stream is through YouTube, if you can't tune in at that time, as soon as the feed is over, it'll post to YouTube as a video, and you can watch the in it. You can watch it in its entirety uh, without having to tune into the live stream. So that ought to be a lot of fun. Let me know what you think about that. Give me your input, and if you don't think you can make it to that time slot, you can actually start posting your questions, and I'll try to cover some of those in the first video that I do. So. That is my new idea. We're doing that at least two or three times just to get a feel for it. But right now we're here for the cast. I know you're here for the game, not to hear me ramble. So uh, despite how awesome my voice is as it tickles your eardrums, I am going to jump into the gameplay because that is what we're here for. Um, let's go ahead and introduce the players here. And then we will talk about the game rules in this awesome game mode. I think I casted one murder party before, but it was way far in the distant past, so I'm going to assume that nobody watched that and just explain everything again, and uh, hopefully we can have some fun with this one. On the northern side, we'll start here and go clockwise. we got Total Ruin as Aeon, Hedge as UEF, then we've got Reptar Jesus, the ever-exploding ACU, going Cybern as is his custom Ice Kiro taking UEF, a Cybern for Orion, followed by two more UEFs for SCBM and Olix, and then finally Belated Cube taking Cybern. This is all UEF and Cybern, except for Total Ruin. All right, the targets have been assigned. Let's talk about the game rules. A few minutes ago, you saw that little pop-up in the middle of the screen that was talking about the 20% boost. What's that all about? Well, that is your reward for killing your target. In this game mode, everyone has a target. You may not necessarily be the target of your target, but everyone has an assigned person to kill. If you can kill that person, you get a 20% eco boost. If you kill the wrong person, you get a handicap. And if you don't kill anyone and someone else kills their target first, then everyone's targets resets and you start over again. 
Now this map is going to be hysterical to have this game mode on because it is small, tightly packed, not many mechs, lots of reclaim and everybody's sitting right next to each other. So wall sections are probably going to be your friend. Point defense creeps are going to be around in abundance and I'm sure we will see the mother of all viper spams at some point because with all of these cyber players there's got to be at least one guy that's going to go for viper spam. Let's go ahead and check in and see where these guys are. We've got Alex putting down his second uh, that is second air going for a third land factory. Belated cube getting a mex upgrade while sitting on a single land factory. We've got two lands for total ruin, one for hedge. And this game is actually varying in rank range from 400 to 1800. So place your bets now on who is actually going to win this. We've got a first land and a blip of a second air. Nope, going second land for Raptor Jesus. Little bit of an engagement over here. We got a Mantis trying to kill off an engineer here. A tank that actually succeeded in killing off an engineer and is now going to move on to a mech. This is trying to deny the reclaim in the middle and it is actually going to succeed and then Belated Cube is going to harass this side. So. I don't know who is whose target, it did not tell me, and honestly I don't want to know. I want it to be a surprise, I don't think there's really any way to see it regardless. Um, so we're just going to have to keep an eye out for who seems to be oppressing who the most. And a good indicator of a target is someone sending an attack unit, bypassing all of their neighbors and going directly to someone halfway across the map, so I'm going to assume that Ice Kiro is targeting Total Ruin. Ice Kiro is going for a bit of a heavier production build. He's got three land factories down, even though only one is working. And then two guys building walls. We've got Orion building two land factories and throwing down a third air. And then SCBM sitting comfortably on his single land factory while he's upgrading mass extractors. Three at a time. Let's see how hard he's mass stalled. Not really. That is some impressive reclaim going on there. You typically don't see that out of a 400 player. I'm assuming that this is going to be a second account. Um, and he has building wall sections all the way around his base, which may seem like a good idea, but when you're talking about something that is inevitably going to descend into a firebase war, walls really don't do you a whole lot of good, and they hinder your units as much as they hinder the other guy's units. So, generally speaking, I probably wouldn't build a whole lot of wall sections, but, you know, a few might be useful here and there. Orion is going for just a wall section in the back, it looks like, just to protect his main base, and I think that is probably a good plan. Alright, I'm going to bump this back up. There's a lot to watch out for. We have potentially four separate combat situations on this map, and I am actually without my mini-map assistance this time around because this map has a texture that my computer cannot pull in dual screen mode so I started I crashed twice back to back at three minutes and 50 something seconds so I killed the dual screen went to single and I'm gonna cast this game um, belated cube has actually only got one t2 mass extractor and he is doing his second one which seems kind of odd. It's almost like, ah, T2 Land Factory. I was staring right at it. I'm like, there's got to be more to this equation. He can't only have that much stuff. Looks like Total Ruin is doing a decent job of land production, although as the game progresses, this is going to get more and more useless. Hedge, building some T1 point events. I'll see how well that works for him. And then Raptor Jesus and Ice Kiro are assembling a great wall betwixt the two. They are each building their own wall sections, but I kind of like... Um, this is Ice Kiro. I kind of like Ice Kiro's interpretation of this because he's building wall sections, Helter Skelter, forcing units to bottleneck and bunch up as they pass through these. An extremely good strategy is actually not to build continuous wall sections. This is, well, he has Lobos, which are not super effective. Medusas would be better, or possibly the Seraphim T1 artillery, maybe, kind of, sort of, yeah. Um, if you build a solid wall section, and then an intersecting wall section like this, it forces all of the units into the little chute to pass through the wall. They all bunch up right here at the entrance. You can park a T1 artillery within easy reach, and you can obliterate seven to eight units at a time with that T1 artillery rapidly ripping through all of the other guy's units. This is an incredibly handy tool, and if you can uh, trick people into forcing their units through that bottleneck, you automatically win just about any land engagement. 
Another thing to remember is that if you're fighting against the wall sections, Reclaim is your friend. They only cost 2 mass and no build power, so if you reclaim them, they basically disappear instantaneously. If you try to destroy them, they have 4,000 health. So send it engineer. Reclaim that wall section. It will work out for you in the end. We already have Vipers online for Belated Cube. Olix is teching hard as expected. He's got a T2 ACU working on T2 power. He's got TMD and he has a T2 land factory it is t2 everything and i imagine given enough time he would actually get to t3 but apparently he is just going to be content with the t nope there he goes that is an unknown upgrade probably gun judging by the speed we have a gun upgrade on raptor jesus's com he's going to push forward kill a point defense kill a mass extractor and just generally make himself into a pain for a hedge over here on this side, we have a lonely jester. Gonna harass a little bit. He needs to push harder, though. There's really no anti-air over here. Actually, there's literally no anti-air over here. He could use that jester to kill off the radar. He could kill off the power storage pretty easily. Cost SCBM some serious mass, and he really needs a new moniker because that is incredibly hard to pronounce in the middle of a cast. Alex is gonna push forward into not one, not two, but three Cerberus turrets. Kind of surprising that Belated Cubes uh, sank that much mass into point defenses. And Olix has already shed about a third of his health. Not a whole lot going on on this other side. He's trying to get rid of those Cerberus turrets, but honestly I don't know if it's worth it at this point. He's going to get rid of that one, but he's going to have to walk in even farther to kill this one. Belated Cube got stealth upgrade, I think. Does he have the purple mist following him? I don't think so. Let me click over here. It's actually the lowest scoring at the moment, which is always a frustrating thing. That is T2. Probably just heavily assisted T2. That's all it was. Okay. So, Hedge is building some Mongies. It's always a cool thing to see when people use the unusual units. Yeah, Cerberus turret pounding away at this Flapjack. Flapjack, you wandered too close. Not a smart thing to do. I'm going to throw out some TMD, which this is actually going to work, because flapjacks fire fairly slowly. That's a lot of Fs to drop in one sentence. Uh, Belated Cube is going to be able to throw up a couple of TMD and block most of the shots from the flapjacks, whereas the Vipers, with that splitting missile and very high fire rate, will always overwhelm any amount of TMD that matches them in mass. So, Belated Cube is basically going to do a slow crawl across Olix's base and there won't be anything that Olix can do to stop him. He's down to 4,000 health at the moment. He's wandering into the range of three Cerberus turrets again, now down to two. There's another one coming up here and here it looks like Belated Cube is going to do an assisted point defense creep with his Vipers right up into this base. He's going to kill off the build power, he's going to kill off the point defense with the Vipers and Olix is not looking very hot at the moment. My, actually I don't have a recommendation for him. Maybe build some T1 bombers and suicide those things in because three T2 or three T1 bombers cost very little mass and will one shot kill a Viper. If he has his Vipers bunched up, you can kill multiple mobile missile launchers in a pass and that works out beautifully in a lot of cases, especially considering the fact that there is no air over here. There's the T1 bombers, just like I was just talking about. Already throwing down some damage on there. Belated Cube trying to dodge around, partially succeeding, but there's still some damage happening there. He's going to have to build a mobile flak to fight off those T1 bombers over here on the right-hand side. we got some more wall sections going down. Raptor Jesus is going to have to retreat in the face of those mongoose Olix. Still not looking healthy, only pulling are only having about 2,900 health. There goes the T2 engineers. Those beautiful bombers are really messing up Belated Cube's plans. Unfortunately, they're not killing enough of these. That one is actually vetted. Holy cow. I don't think I've ever seen a vetted Viper before. That is a new one for me. Alex trying to throw some triads back up, but at this point I'm not sure why he's even attempting it because there are enough Vipers up here to take down his point defense pretty much as soon as he builds them. It is a fruitless endeavor. He's going to keep building those bombers though, throwing them away. There's the flak. 
trying to lay down some damage on these point defenses and get them off of his back, but not being super successful. Over here, we've got Vipers exchanging fire. Actually, Vipers and Flapjacks. We got Cybern versus UEF, and here's a T2 gunship snipe. Or an attempted one, anyway. I knew that pink was going to be going after red. There's some anti-air up there, but no flak. T1 anti-air is not going to be enough, I think, to stop this. Maybe. Nope, he's focus firing on the hydro. I would focus fire on the energy storage. It has less health than the hydro. It dies faster, and the explosion of those two... Um, energy storages would actually kill the hydro very effectively so you always aim for the energy storage it only has 500 health come on you can kill it so easily two t1 bombers it's all you need belated cube that was the stealth upgrade i knew that he was going to get it eventually belated cube does love his cybern i didn't notice all of the extra wall sections went up for orion orion is now bottled in it looks like he's living inside an hourglass does that mean he's running out of time i will leave that up to you to decide and vipers are still pounding away on this right hand side a futile effort these tmd they will always fail versus the vipers not a good plan at all on the left, Belated Cube is now sitting comfortably. He doesn't really have to do a whole lot of anything else. He's got enough Vipers. He can pretty much do whatever he wants to with Olix's base. We've got more triads going down. Olix is still top of the scoreboard, top of the income charts, and is not mass stalled in the slightest. Yes, he's degrading his mass reserves quickly, but he has a lot of reclaim out here. I think that's what he's been surviving on for the most part. That was an odd accent to give. It's like putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. English is hard. SCBM is just kind of camping out inside his wall section. Oh, Fire Beetles! What? Where are you headed, Mr. Fire Beetle? Are you headed for purple? I think you're headed for purple. Trying to keep an eye out, see who dies. No! There's the flak. Skyboxers are gonna knock those fire beetles out, no problemo. And SCBM has a T3 Max. Why he has a T3 Max and half of another on this map, I will never know. This map does not need to go to the T4 level. It is small enough to settle with T1 or T2, possibly T3 if the game gets drawn out. But I really don't see T4s happening here, even though they do on this map with some regularity. We're only at 13 minutes, teching to T3 mechs is extremely dangerous, and I think the only reason he's not dead yet is because Alex is already engaged, and he's next door to Orion, who is an 1100. Not that I'm ripping on his rank, but typically the lower ranks are not quite as aggressive. If this would have been Alex, he would have already killed Purple and taken all of his things. Because Reclaim is king. Raptor Jesus. Honestly not looking super healthy. He does have a flak with him. And that would solve the gunship problem. Should these gunships choose to go after him. But honestly I don't see why he has his ACU out at the front at this point. Alex. I cannot believe that you've not lost your base yet. It's actually quite impressive. He does have a few flapjacks of his own. Those are slowly pestering a few of these vipers to death, but by no means enough vipers to actually decide this game. I don't know if Belated Cube actually has Olix as a target, or if he's decided to go after Olix because his other opponent is only 800, or his other neighbor. And Olix is the dangerous one this game, and a whopping 1800 rank in this category. So, I kind of agree with him. Even if Olix is not the target, suppressing Olix is key because if Olix gets the upper hand on anyone in this game, he'll kill them, take their mass, and then run over all the other players in sequence. I spy another gunship push. Where, oh, where are you headed, Mr. Gunships? They are headed for the middle to have a picnic in the open field. That is what it is. Oh, jesters. Really now? Really? We survive against Viper Spam. 
for so much of this game. And then when push comes to shove, we die to Jesters. Four Jesters left. Is it going to go? Is it going to go? Is it going to go? Oh! So close! One Jester left and boom! Olex is down. Repeat, Olex is down. That was an attempted attack missile snipe right there, but it did not work due to TMD. We got spearheads over here, which is actually a very handy tool. Oh my word. Wow. <laughs> oh, green suicided into Reptar's base. Just as a final, extremely loud, screw you, buddy. I didn't want to lose anyway. So now Raptor Jesus lost all of his build power. And here come the gunships directly into the mobile flag. Don't die to mobile flag. People, don't die to mobile flag, please. We've got a cyber attack launch, maybe, yes, no, no. And the gunships have successfully dealt with the mobile flak, and they're out now after Reptar. Reptar needs to get more mobile flak out ASAP, or he is dead. Dead as a doornail. I wish I knew where that saying come from, because honestly, it's kind of nonsensical, even though it does make a minute amount of sense, because a doornail is definitely a dead thing. And Reptar is joining that club... Under 1k health and Kablooey taking all of the gunships swarm with him. He is now down for the count. These spearheads are awesome. I did not expect to see this, this game. SCBM, you made my day. You built the underdog unit that I do love so dearly. And it is just ripping this base to shreds. Here comes a TAC missile. That is headed for the ASU, I do believe. Things kind of getting hairy up in the north. Yes, down to 9k health. Here comes another attack launch, which he is not going to walk into. I thought he was going to face plant into that missile for a minute there, but it did not happen. Belated cube fending off all of these T1 units over here. We got some Tech 2 bombers attempting a snipe on Orion, which is going to fail. But here come the T2 tanks and a second pass from the Janus. And we're getting low on health here. I think he is about to die. Belated Cube fending off these tanks with his ACU. Pillars having to cross around the bottom end. Slowing them down quite substantially. Here come the T2 bombers. And boom! Orion is out of the game. That leaves four players in here. Belated Cube is now getting aggressive with Total Ruin. Purple is also very far overextended with no anti-air. That is not a wise choice to make considering that this guy just died to T2 Bombers. You've got to have flak. You've got to have something else with you. Belated Cube throwing down a Cerberus turret. Unfortunate. Oh! And Total Ruin's going back. I thought that was going to die to an overcharge right there, but it did not. Beautiful. Cerberus turret is going to pay for itself. It's going to lay down some damage, possibly kill a few units, and all is well with the world. We got gunships coming out now. Gunships and Januses. Januses and gunships. Januses are not that great. I will readily admit that. They are kind of a fail T2 bomber, good for blanketing areas with some napalm, but not real good at sniping individual targets because you can dodge them ridiculously easy. But pair that with some gunships, and holy cow, we have another attack missile snipe. No, don't do, don't, don't, no, no, why? This is such a boring way to die. It makes you feel so terrible, so stupid, so idiotic. This is the ultimate facepalm. To die to attack missiles is just, ugh. It is honestly enough to make you clinically depressed when that happens, because there's nothing you can do about it when you see it incoming well you can up till the point where the missiles are right right there and your ACU is right there you have just enough time to react and not enough time to save yourself and it it's really really sad so we got some gunships and some more gunships all of these stingers grouping up 
Who are they going to go for? I think red is still the target here. If I'm not totally mistaken. That was a target at the beginning of the game. So Ice Kiro has actually accumulated some handicaps if he's killed these other people and they weren't his target. I don't know that for sure, but yeah. Well, no. Never mind. Other people died, so it reset who the targets were. All right, Belated Cube is now under fire. He is the highest ranked player remaining. And he is going to go out in a blaze of glory, pestered and hammered to death by these stingers. I actually love UEF guns. It's like a Gatling gun that you see on arcade games. I love the look of it. The graphical effect for it is brilliant. And there goes the ACU. Belated Cube is out of the game. Now it's just pink and red. Ice Kiro versus Total Ruin. And I think Ice Kiro's got this game in the bag. If I'm not totally mistaken, and someone doesn't pull a T4 out of their hat or something that I didn't know about, I think Total Ruin is going to die. Got some gunships moving up. Got some T1 and T2 tanks only a matter of time again with the energy storage if you kill the energy storage it works so much better alternately when you know that you have an explosive building don't build your t2 radar next to it for that matter don't build two energy storage next to the same power plant it's just not a good idea at all because it tends to violently explode at the worst possible time all right pink is getting aggressive so he's going to head across and squelch the red uprising. Total Ruin is going to commit himself to destroying the horde, but I think that he is toast. He needs to overcharge more. There's a good overcharge group right there. He probably kills six units if you overcharge this back one. But between the gunships and the T2 tanks and the T1 tanks and everything else being thrown at him, there he goes. The warm fire of oblivion has lit his soul, and the reigning champion is Ice Kiro. That is going to be the end of the murder party, and this is definitely a game mode that I would encourage you to pick up. This can be great fun with a few friends, possibly even a group of strangers. I don't see this game mode being played enough, and it is just hilarious. Especially if you're all on Mumble, because the verbal backstabbing and politics going on is quite epic. So... That is going to wrap up this game and this cast. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that me being back to my cheery self is a welcome sound to your ears. Like I mentioned in my vlogs, which you should totally check out, The Voice of Insanity. Sometimes I post things there that are important. Not necessarily this time, but there's some interesting stuff going on down there, and you can interact with me more. Um... I have been a little bit down and out recently and kind of slacking back on the cast. I do apologize for that especially to you guys who are the loyal viewers there's some people here a group of about maybe 500 people who have watched just about every cast that i have put out and that is extremely humbling and incredibly awesome and i'm gonna do my absolute level best to get out some good solid content for this much neglected game one that you need to be introducing new people to so we can keep this community alive and keep playing this amazing amazing game okay that is all i have to say about that thank you so much for watching as always and i will see you in the next cast